All right. Um, all right. Uh, today, um, I'm going to host myself uh, for the DDPS seminar. Um, I would like to introduce many, many exciting data-driven physical simulation capabilities we have developed in the past several years here at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. I know you all are interested in uh, data-driven physical simulation, so I'm sure you will enjoy the talk today. Uh, my name is Young Su, and I was fortunate enough to work with awesome reduced auto model teams here at Lawrence Livermore, Dylan, uh, Kevin, and Tony, and also uh, both internal and external uh, collaborators. Of course, all the results I'm going to present today uh, were not possible without these awesome people. All right, uh, let's start by arguing uh, about physical simulations first. Uh, there is no doubt that physical simulations are so essential for the advance in science and technology these days. Well then, how did we get the physics, uh, physical simulation capability that we are heavily relying on? Uh, I would argue that data uh, already played an important role. Uh, just to illustrate, if you look at how we have advanced uh, the orbital model of the solar system in history, it starts with Copernican model, which correctly postulated that planets orbit sun, right? By uh, the telescopic observations of the phase of Venus. Then Kepler interpreted the more observational data of planetary motions by Tycho Brahe to develop Kepler's three laws of orbital motions. Then Newton further developed laws of mechanics, gravity, and calculus, of course, which is further, uh, which is further advanced to differential equations. Then many physics laws uh, were uh, written in terms of differential equations, such as Navier-Stokes, Schrodinger's wave equations, and many other equations of motions. Then computer came along, greatly improving the computing powers, as well as the numerical methods of solving these differential equations, thanks to Hilbert, Courant, and many other pioneers, right? This is how we have now physical simulation capability that is advancing science and technology. For example, you are looking at a beautiful simulation modeled by smooth particle hydrodynamics or shaped charge penetration. The simulation is well matched with experiment. And this kind of simulations can be run routinely for various applications. However, it has limitation though. Uh, that is, it can be very expensive. For example, one fold simulation of this particular shaped charge simulation takes 7.4 days. This is unfortunate in multi query applications such as design optimization and uncertainty quantification. Therefore, we need uh, reduced order models that accurately accelerate these expensive physical simulations. Here again, data plays a key role of building an efficient reduced order models. A reduced order model uh, can be built by uh, first considering a parameter space. The parameter space can be initial condition, boundary condition, or material properties of shape charged simulation, for example. Then you collect simulation data by solving full auto model with high performance computing machines if you have for several sample points in your parameter space. Then you apply machine learning techniques to build a reduced auto model. Various machine learning techniques are available as listed here. So various reduced auto modeling types are possible, but depending on how much you incorporate physics laws in the reduced auto model, it can be intrusive or non-intrusive. I will go over some advantages and disadvantages of intrusive and non-intrusive methods in the next slide. But once the reduced total model is built, you can accelerate simulations and predict the solution at various query points here and there and many uh, other points which you have not seen uh, in the training phases uh, and accurately uh, at the same time. So this is obvious obvious that reduced to the model is useful for fast 
predictable calculations, for example, in multi-query applications. <clears throat> These reduced total models can be categorized by its level of intrusiveness. Uh, for example, black box approach denoted as BB here is the least intrusive method requiring only data. Then we can think of more intrusive method, which is the linear subspace reduced total model, so-called LS from where the state fields are represented by a compact linear subspace. And even more intrusive methods that is nonlinear manifold reduced total model, so-called NM ROM, where the state fields are represented by a compact nonlinear manifold, uh, can be thought of. Um, but roughly speaking, more intrusiveness means more accuracy. So the intrusive reduced total models are more accurate than black box approach if the same amount of data are used. On the other hand, more intrusiveness means less speed up. So the black box method is faster than the intrusive methods in general. Also, the Physics constraint reduced total model, intrusive reduced total models are more robust in extrapolation than the black box reduced total models, which will become handy in multi query applications such as PD constraint optimization. That'll, that'll become clear in the later, of, uh, later part of the talk. Okay, let me uh, try to introduce three different uh, black box reduced total models. The first black box approach is the linear multi step neural network. This method uses the linear subspace reduce reduction approach, so-called proper orthogonal decomposition uh, through SVD, singular value decomposition. To, illust to, to illustrate that, uh, let's say we have a airfoil flow data uh, denoted as W here. We use singular value decomposition to obtain a reduced basis for the solution variable um, and then project and then project uh, the original airfoil flow data W onto the subspace spanned by the reduced basis and obtain the reduced data A. Then uh, the linear multi-step neural network is trained uh, using the reduced data A and associated parameter mu in order to propagate in time in the reduced latent space. Then the full state is restored by the reduced basis B. As you can see, we only use the data throughout the whole process, right? So this is black box reduced to all the models. By the way, this type of reduced to the model is called latent space learning approach. It's taking latent space learning approach. The latent space learning approach, it has a two main ingredients. The first one is the compression and the second one is the identification. For example, this particular uh, the example of particular method of linear multi-step neural network used the linear compression um, as a ident identifications and the, um, the linear multi-step neural network for, uh, no, no, the linear compression for, for the compression and the linear multi-step neural network for the identification. All right, we have applied this linear multi-step neural network based black box approach for a steady uh, flow around the airfoil simulations. Here we change the Bach number to generate the simulation data and then compress them uh, using the singular value decomposition and train the linear multi-step neural network as I described in pre previous slides. As you can see uh, that the predictive solution by this surrogate model and the full order model are identical in eyeball norm. While the surrogate model takes only 2.55 seconds while the full order model takes 314 seconds giving us a speed up of greater than uh, 100 uh, times. Quantitatively, the relative error between those two solutions is less than 1% uh, everywhere. Pretty good, right? Another way of generating, generating the reduced space or latent space is to use autoencoder. Let's say we have porous media flow data. Encoder compresses the original data to a latent space. Then the decoder decompresses the latent space data back to the full state. The encoder and decoder are some sort of neural networks. They have to be trained. Are we trained by minimizing the difference between the original data W and the approximated da data W tilde. Then for the prediction uh, of the new parameter value mu star, 
various interpolation techniques can be used, such as red IO basis function or artificial neural, neural network or some other your favorite uh, interpolation techniques. This nonlinear compression technique is compared with uh, the proper orthogonal decomposition, uh, the linear uh, the compression technique for the porous media flow simulations. And we found that for the problems with Colmore growth with decaying slowly, meaning that um, the advection dominated or the transport uh, dominated simulations, auto encoder approach, which is the nonlinear compression technique, outperforms the POD method, which is the linear compression technique in terms of accuracy. This fact will be handy when we talk about the nonlinear manifold reduced models. So uh, keep that in mind. Similar nonlinear compression approach is used in deep fluids uh, where the autoencoder is used for compression and decoder uh, um, decompression of the solution, uh, soli the original solution data W. The only difference here is that the latent space dynamics are being learned by the latent uh, space integration uh, integrator after the autoencoder is uh, autoencoder is trained, and after the autoencoder is trained, um, uh, after the, the the latent space integrator is uh, is trained, um, uh, that integration will be very fast because it's uh, on under the the reduced space. Then with the predicted latent space solutions so from the latent space, uh, we restore or reconstruct the full states by applying the trained decoder. Okay, uh, Alex asked for a better picture of the computational cost. Shouldn't be the time spent to create high fidelity results via forms be factored in? Also, how general is a learned model? Uh, how uh, what's the trade-off between training set size and the generality of the learned predictor? Uh, thank you. Okay, th thank you for uh, for the question, Alex. Um, yes, I mean, um, well, yeah. To be fair, um, it's um, it has to be factored in. But the uh, the reduced model or the surrogate models, the the usage of those uh, models in in general is in in the multi query applications. Uh, so, for example. Um, uh, we, there is a offline phase and online phase. Offline phase, um, uh, we train the reduced, uh, we collect the simulation data, and um, and um, and then um, we, we collect the simulation data and uh, for the for some training points. And um, the goal in the multi query applications, we try to accelerate, uh, given a surrogate mo model or a reduced model. Um, and accurately predict the, uh, the solutions in, in online phase. So a lot of times, um, I mean, if it is reasonable, the, the, tra the training offline phase is, is reasonable, it is plausible, then we uh, are um, willing to the, you know, the sacrifice those expensive uh, offline phase. However, as, as I'm going to talk about later, uh, if you have high dimensional parameter space, then you need to sample exponentially many uh, the sampling points there. It means exponentially many uh, of the full order model simulations. In that case, there it, it's impossible to uh, to even conduct the, the offline phase in training phase. So uh, that's the problem. But that issue I'm going to um, uh, touch upon uh, later on. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think that answered the question, but if not, uh, we can discuss more in Q&A sessions. All right, uh, we have applied this black box approach, uh, the, the deep, uh, deep fluids uh, to Berger's equations where the simulation is very advection dominated and the shock front is formed and moving. As you can see from the movie, uh, the full order model and the deep fluid solutions are very similar in eyeball norm, while the deep fluid gives a speed up of greater than 100 using the latent space dimension of only five. However, uh, the quantitatively, the deep fluid gives the maximum relative error of 38.6%. This might be good enough for animations or digital graphics, but it is a bit too large for scientific applications. So for a better accuracy, we need to incorporate the existing first principle or the equation of states in our model. 
One way of doing this is to use reduced total model technique. Here, I'm going to introduce very traditional projection-based reduced total model approach. To do that, we will start with this governing equation represented by this ordinary differential equation. Here, W is a state variable, F is your nonlinear terms, and the T is the time variable, and mu is your parameter. Let's imagine. Okay. And we first approximate the solution as a linear combination of reduced basis phi, whose dimension is a lot smaller than the full order model dimension, big n sub s. Here, the keyword is linear subspace. Then you plug the solution representation into the governing equations. You will end up with an overdetermined system, right? Where you have more equations than unknowns. So to close the system, you apply some kind of projections. Here I have applied the Gallican projection that gives a reduced system of ordinary differential equations here. Then you can apply your favorite time integrator uh, to this reduced system. For example, I have applied the, black, um, the backward Euler time, uh, time integrator uh, just for the demonstration purpose. Uh, this gives us the fully discretized reduced nonlinear system of equations you have to solve in every time step, right? By the way, uh, you have to treat these nonlinear terms um, carefully, uh, otherwise this reduced total model will be slower than the full order model. Uh, so what's the point of introducing all these uh, uh, complicated techniques? Um, at the end of the day, it is slower than the full order model. So, uh, we, um, in order to achieve the efficiency, uh, we have to apply the hyperreduction to treat the, these nonlinear terms correctly. The most famous hyperreduction technique is DEIM, um, arguably, uh, which stands for discrete uh, empirical interpolation methods. The DIM uh, introduces the nonlinear basis phi sub f and then express the nonlinear terms as a linear combination of the nonlinear basis vectors as we did for the solution basis, right? Then it introduces a sampling matrix Z uh, which selects an important subset of the nonlinear terms. So after the action of Z on the nonlinear term f, only the subset of the f will be evaluated. Now the sampling indices of the matrix Z can be obtained through the various algorithms, which I'm not going to uh, go into details, but the DEIM and QDIMs are the variants and, and popular ones. Then the generalized coordinates for the nonlinear term F of hat can be obtained by solving the interpolation problem. Then you plug this expression into the reduced system of equations wherever the nonlinear term shows up. Then you will end up with these crazy looking equations, but if you look at them close enough, most of the terms can be pre-computed and uh, these uh, nonlinear terms can be efficiently computed thanks to the sampling matrix Z in front of the nonlinear term F. This is how we, um, this is how we achieve the efficiency through the reduced total model and hyperreduction. There are many variants of DIM. Um, for example, GNAT, NSD GNAT, and SNS. Uh, but the uh, main machinery of the hyperreduction follows this paradigm that I have just introduced here. All right, this traditional, uh, the linear subspace reduced to the model can be used uh, to accurately accelerate various physical simulations, achieving a speed up of 10 to 1000 with a relative error less than 1% or 5%, for example. Uh, but uh, Anders uh, asked, uh, is oil or backward really your favorite method? Uh, it is very dissipative with uh, hampers long-term accuracy. Yeah, good point, Anders. Um, uh, the time integrator has to be chosen uh, for, uh, for, for your applications and for your uh, governing equations. So for, yeah, so um, it is my favorite uh, method. Um, but um, for the wave equations, for example, uh, the applications you are mainly dealing with, probably the backward Euler integration is not the good one. Okay, uh, can you elaborate more on Z? Thank you, Brenda, for the equations. Is it stochastic? No, it's not stochastic. So, so the Z matrix, uh, we actually, we do not form the Z matrix. It's, it's a, uh, if you look at the structure of the Z matrix, it's, it's basically the selected, the column of the identity matrix, which correspond the selected one is corresponding to the sampled uh, sampled uh, 
sampled elements in the nonlinear terms. And um, we uh, obtained that using various algorithms like DIM or QDIM, basically um, um, the, the physics informed the greedy, uh, not physics informed, uh, some, some greedy uh, algorithm um, is applied to select those sampling matrices. Um, but it is not stochastic and it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I can go into detail um, later with you, Brenda. Okay. All right. Um, okay. As I said, this linear subspace reduced model has been successfully applied to, uh, for example, tough simulations such as Lagrangian hydrodynamics. Uh, which you are seeing here, uh, but not only the with the linear subspace reduced model, we have to add the time windowing approach uh, in order to overcome this uh, the advection dominated phenomena from the Lagrange hydrodynamics. And with that, um, um, we were able to obtain a speed up of great speed up, uh, like to, from fourteen point six um, and twenty two point eight and thirty one point two and eighty seven point eight uh, for all these Lagrangian hydrodynamics uh, simulations, and with great accuracy. If you uh, if we compare the the solutions with the full order model, for example, then we get the relative error less than one percent. Not not even the less than one percent, like less than zero point one percent, which implies that if you compare the reduced model solution with the full order model solution, it's not distinguishable uh, at all. All right. Uh, uh, one great thing about this um, this reduced order models projection based reduced model is that its speed up will increase as we apply it to larger scale problem. Just to see that effect, we have um, refined the Rayleigh Taylor uh, instability problems and observed the speed up. Um, as you can see from the graph, a higher speed up is achieved as the size of the problem increases. Okay, John. Uh, Ragusa asked, are the results shown uh, reproductive case or are the simulation parametric? So the one I showed uh, here uh, in this slide is the reproductive case. However, uh, the one I'm going to show right now is the predictive case. So let me explain what this is. Okay. Um, another great thing about uh, this reduced model is its robustness uh, with extrapolation. Unlike the black box approach, uh, since the reduced tonal model directly incorporates the governing equations for the underlying physics, remember, uh, we have plugged the reduced representation into the governing equations, right? So we are using the, the physics um, in, in reduced tonal model. Um, so because of that, even though it is used to predict the solution for the parameter points away from the training data, it can still give a reasonable accuracy. For example, this graph shows the relative errors of the local reduced student model that is trained at the blast energy 0 0.25, right, at this point. Of course, at that point is the most accurate uh, because the reduced model is trained there. And as we expected, uh, if, uh, if we try to predict the solution uh, for other initial blast energy, for example, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, the accuracy is deteriorated. Um, it is expected, but however, not much though. As you can see from uh, around 0 0.4 to 0 0.4, these regions, the, this local reduced model is still can observe the relative error less than 1%, um, you know, even the worst error uh, being less than 1%. So it means that, you know, the reduced total model, the projection reduced total model, physics constrained reduced total model is more robust uh, than the, the purely data-driven method. Um, and purely data-driven method cannot achieve this kind of extrapolation accuracy because they do not incorporate the physics law. This is kind of the view real benefit of uh, using the physics physics constraint model. All right, this has a great implications. Uh, for example, in gradient-based optimization, let's say you do not have sensitivity implementation. As you may know, the implementation of the sensitivity can be quite complicated. In this case, you can approximate the gradient using the finite difference as I have written here. In the finite difference evaluations, you can evaluate this function evaluations, uh, the perturbed function evaluation using the, using the extrapolation capability of the local reduced model, right? So using that, you can uh, compute this quantity pretty accurately and pretty fast and, and so that you can 
uh, compute the finite difference uh, schemes uh, using the local reduced to models uh, pretty well. And you can use the gradient based optimization solver, for example. All right, another implication is that you can easily add more local reduced models to cover the broader parameter domain, right? Each local reduced model has a trust region for this one from 0 0.1 to 4. In order to broaden the parameter space, uh, you can build another local reduced model around 6.6 uh, so that the overall the relative error is less than, uh, less than 1% or some target accuracy you would like to achieve. But here, there is the question you have to ask, how do we are uh, going to uh, obtain those sampling points, the location of where the local reduced model has to be built, right? And that can be achieved by this physics constraint, uh, physics informed, uh, the, uh, the greedy algorithm. Uh, somehow this one is not playing. All right, great. All right, so the greedy algorithm tries to find the suboptimal, if not optimal, set of local reduced models whose overall accuracy is less than uh, some desirable accuracy level, say, for example, 3%. As a demonstration, we set our parameter space to be blessed energy, uh, changing from 0 0.075 to 1.25, just to show how different, how different dynamics are, are for those endpoints, like 0 0.075 and 1.25, the movie on the, on the right, uh, shows the seed of blast um, movie on the left here. Uh, it shows the 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 seed of blast dynamics with the initial blast energy of 0 0.075, and the one on the right shows the dynamics with the initial blast energy of 1.25. For example, this this dynamics it does not the shock wave is formed, but it does not hit the boundary. While the this dynamics shows the shock wave is propagating and uh, hit the boundary and reflect it, and it's um, it's interact with the incoming waves and etc. Complicated, right? All right. So to illustrate the greedy algorithm, um, the greedy algorithm starts by setting a desirable uh, accuracy level. Uh, as I said, let's say three percent relative error everywhere, and then um, it builds a first local reduced model. So you gotta start with a some reduced model. So we build a, a local reduced model, for example, in the middle, but it's it was my choice. You could uh, build a reduced model in the end point, right, for example. And then compute error indicator, uh, which uh, has some sort of the physics in it. And we usually use the residual based error indicator, which we did for this particular problem. Um, um, and we compute the error indicator over the whole, uh, you know, the parameter uh, space, and then find where the maximum error, uh, maximum error indicator occurs, which is indicated by this red point. Then uh, we build a second local reduced model there. And uh, now we have to update the, uh, the error indicators around the second local reduced model because they will be small due to the second local reduced model, right? Then uh, find the next maximum error indicator, which is depicted at, at this as this red points here. And you repeat, uh, uh, you build a reduced model, the third reduced model there. Um, you repeat this process, as you can see, uh, until uh, the overall, the, error, uh, the accuracy level is, is higher than the, the target accuracy level. All right, uh, here is an actual greedy algorithm result. We plot a graph of relative error with respect to the initial blast energy from 0 0.075 to 1.25, as I said. And then the, the target relative error um, is a relative error of the 3%. Uh, that's what we are trying to achieve. And uh, using the greedy algorithm I, that I just described, um, it spits out the 15 local reduced models depicted as this blue dots here. And as you can see, if you compute the, uh, the relative error everywhere, uh, as you can see, the, the older relative error is less than 3%, uh, which, which is pretty good. And because this greedy algorithm incorporates the error indicator that is physics informed, uh, usually we use the residual based error indicator, it picks these points off optimally, uh, if not optimally. If you use, for example, Latin hypercube sampling or tensor product sampling, uh, or any random or statistical sampling, you would not be able to achieve this minimal number of points for the same level of accuracy. So this is uh, the power of, again, the physics-informed greedy sampling uh, the procedure. All right, um, we have explained this detailed description of these linear subspace reduced models in this paper. 
which we expect to be accepted pretty soon in CMAME. And the following two softwares are available so that you yourself can generate these results. Also, as a matter of fact, we have recently launched the web page of the Libram, the one of the, uh, the library uh, the software for the reduced student models, where you can find many useful tools uh, regarding uh, physics constraint reduced student models for various physical simulators. Additionally, uh, several YouTube videos are, uh, about the reduced student models are available, so take advantage of it. All right, here are some more detailed snippets of the Li Libram. The Libram is a library for reduced total models, for, um, as I said. It has several features. First, Libram can do efficient proper orthogonal decomposition using various singular value decomposition techniques, such as static SVD, incremental SVD, randomized SVD, and space-time SVD. Especially this incremental SVD, which can be also combined with the space-time SVD, is very attractive if you deal with a large scale simulation data. And the Libram also has a dynamic mode decomposition capability. And if you click example tabs in the web page, for example, then you will be able to find several examples for which the dynamic mode decomposition, decomposition is applied, such as uh, advection, uh, uh, advection uh, problem and the Euler equations and the heat conductions and the nonlinear elasticities and, and so on. And the projection-based reduced model examples can be found in Libron web page also, um, the, such as Poisson problem, uh, nonlinear diffusion problem, and the several Lagrangian hydrodynamics problems, which I have uh, presented in previous slides. Finally, the Libron has greedy algorithm capability that I have introduced in previous slides. So, so please take advantage of it. And at the same time, the older source codes are provided. So you can download the Libram and generate these results yourself. So please play with it and get your hands dirty. Um, however, if you are new to data-driven physical simulations, I would recommend to first look into Poisson uh, example, um, uh, which has also the YouTube tutorial about it, uh, three of them. And we plan to add more examples and uh, capabilities. So please stay tuned and please take advantage of it. And I keep saying it. Um, and if you are reduced, by the way, if you are reduced order model developers, um, then we welcome your contributions. Uh, since Libram is an open source code, which is available in GitHub, let's work together to add cool reduced order models capabilities. Right? Okay. Uh, be with us. All right. Great. All right. Unfortunately, though, the linear surface reduced to the models have a great limitations. That is, it cannot accurately represent a long time advection dominated solution with a small basis size without any special uh, treatments. Let's look at the 2D uh, burgers problem that you have seen in previous slides. The solution is very advection dominated. As you can see from the movies, the LS ROM, linear surface ROM, shows fictitious oscillation in front of the shock wave if, you, if the reduced uh, space dimension of five is used, resulting in, in a relative error around 34%, which is not good enough for many scientific applications. The limitation of this linear surface reduced model, if you think about it, comes from the fact that the solution is represented by linear combination of a fixed reduced basis. This issue needs to be addressed. I mean, the time windowing approach I have shown for the Lagrangian hydrodynamics, that's one of them, then that's one way. But as a matter of fact, many researchers came up with a different potential solutions for this issue. For example, the, the shifted POD by Rowley and Race, and the registration-based model uh, by Tommaso Tadai uh, in EMEA, and Raiden, uh, the transform-based reduced models and reduced to deep network by Don Sop Lee, and implicit feature tracking-based method by uh, Matt Jar, uh, and the time windowing reduced models, our own, uh, the Lagrangian hydrodynamics by Dylan Copeland. And these methods are indeed promising and needs more research effort. But uh, for the best of my knowledge, these four methods are still under development to be extended to fully 3D problems. 
And the time window in reduced model requires many, many windows to handle a long time of vex and dominated problems. Therefore, for now, let's focus on the nonlinear manifold reduced model, which is first introduced by Gukjin Lee and Kevin Carberg in 2020, where the linear subspace solution representation is replaced by the nonlinear manifold solution representation. Although they were able to obtain a great accuracy with a small size of latent space, which was really good, but their method was slower than the full order model because the nonlinear manifold reduced model is adding more nonlinearity to the original governing equations. And the Jacobian computation of the neural network becomes a bottleneck, hindering the fast computation. So today, um, now I'm going to present a version of nonlinear manifold reduced model that is now a lot faster than the full order model simulation using a hyperreduction and the special structure of the neural network. All right, to formally explain the nonlinear manifold reduced model, here is the governing equation you have seen before, where W is your solution variable, um, uh, solution variable and uh, the F is your nonlinear terms, and mu is your, uh, the parameter, uh, parameter values, okay? And first, we approximate the solution with a nonlinear manifold, which is represented by the nonlinear function G here that maps a small latent space dimension to full order model dimension. Uh, the nonlinear map is obtained through the autoencoder training with the solution data from the corresponding full order model simulations. Note that this decoder is mapping the latent space to the full order states. So it is perfect for our nonlinear map function G. So we use the decoder as the nonlinear map function. Then we plug this nonlinear manifold solution representation into the governing equation and obtain the overdetermined system where you have more equations than unknowns. Here, uh, you must be careful with the nonlinear terms. As I emphasized before, we need to sample and compute only a subset of the nonlinear terms through hyperreduction. All right, so when you do the hyperreduction, though, the structure of the neural network matters for the efficiency of the nonlinear manifold reduced total model. Let's first look at the neural network with two um, well, one hidden, uh, the two hidden layers as a decoder. Uh, let's say that the orange disk here in the outputs and nodes are the selected ones by the sampling matrix Z in the hyperreduction, remember? And you will notice quickly that many hidden nodes, many hidden nodes are connected uh, to this uh, selected output nodes. Um, and as you go deeper and deeper in the hidden layers, the number of connected hidden nodes are increasing very fast. This actually degenerates the efficiency of the nonlinear manifold reduced model because the Jacobian computation of this neural net uh, is very expensive. On the other hand, if you use a shallow neural network, that is one hidden layer, then you can uh, easily see that the last number of hidden nodes are connected to the sampled output, which brings us an ultimate efficiency in the nonlinear manifold reduced model after we extract the soft subnet of chosen nodes, uh, which is depicted as this orange, orange nodes. And if you, as you can imagine, if you sparsify the structure even further, then you will get even better efficiency, right? Because the size of the subnet will be very small and the, the computation of the Jacobian um, of the subnet will be very efficient, efficient. All right, here we compare the performance of all the reduced order models that I have uh, introduced in this presentation, including the nonlinear manifold reduced model, NMROM, linear subspace reduced order model, and the and the black box outputs, deep fluid. As you can see from the movies, NMROM and full order model are almost identical in eyeball norm. And quantitatively, NMROM achieves less than 1% maximum relative error. Furthermore, a speed up of 11 is achieved by the NMROM. So it's pretty good. Okay, uh, the switching a gear a little bit. Uh, another potential way of overcoming the issue caused by the advection dominated problem is to use the space time reduced model, and it achieves a um, very maximal, um, you know, the reductions in reduced models. Okay, the space time reduced model tries to reduce not only the spatial degrees of freedom, but also the temporal degrees of freedom. 
it does that by introducing both space and time reduced bases. They are combined through the Kronecker product to represent uh, the whole space and time solution space. Then the coefficient uh, corresponding to the space time basis vectors are the only unknowns, which maximally reduces the total number of unknowns. Then uh, the space time solution representation is plugged again back into the space time with the formulation um, of the full order model and form the overdetermined system. Again, the, this overdetermined system uh, needs to be closed by taking the normal. Um, we do that by taking the norm of the space time residual and minimizing it. Again, here uh, we have to careful with the nonlinear residual terms uh, in order to if, uh, get the efficiency. We need to apply the hyperreduction, and this G bar is representing the the weighting matrix um, of the sampling matrix uh, for the space time residual terms R R, R bar. Okay, we have applied this space-time residual model to a large-scale particle transport problem whose problem size is around 10 billion in space and time domain. And using space-time residual to the models, we were able to reduce the 10 billion degrees of freedom to only 10 and still gets the pretty much the same physics response as shown in the movie. The full order model took 17.4 seconds with 256 cores which is not bad, but the space-time reduced model was able to finish the simulation within 0 0.006 seconds with, uh, with only one core. Uh, that gives us a, a world time uh, speed up of 2,700 and quantitatively the relative error was less than 1% throughout the time history if you use the time, uh, if you use the basis dimension of 10. All right, the last topic I would like to share is the component-wise reduced to model lattice design algorithm. This is not particularly a method of handling the advection-dominated problem or hyperbolic uh, uh, the simulations, but it is a nice way of overcoming the issue of distributed parameter space, which is very high dimensional. Remember the, um, when I answer uh, one, of the, uh, one of the questions from the audience before, the high dimensional, uh, the parameter space is causing real problem because it requires uh, exponentially many the sampling points. But um, using uh, using uh, this component wise reduced total model, uh, we are able to uh, resolve that issue very uh, nicely. So I would like to introduce that uh, method um, right now briefly um, as a last topic. Okay, as an applications. And uh, of the component-wise reduced model, we, we looked at microstructure design or metamaterial designs. And uh, although it's not the only, uh, you know, the, the applications, uh, this was a perfect, a perfect application. Okay, so microstructure design and metamaterial designs are great interest these days because of the advance in 3D printing, right? I don't think anyone is going to argue about, about that. And there are many microstructures found in nature, oyster shell, bone, honeycomb, and cactus lattice, etc. blah, 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 blah. There are so many. And all these uh, are there because they can achieve the maximum strength with light weight, right? So many industries, national labs, and the universities are trying to mimic these attractive features of metamaterials by looking for an optimal design. Um, but we have some problem here. To model the lattice type structure, it would be the most accurate if we use the monolithic finite element method with very high resolution. Unfortunately, this is computationally very expensive. This again hinders a fast forward calculation, uh, which is unfortunate in design optimization context because many forward calculations are needed to explore the parameter space. To accelerate the lattice structure design optimization process with good accuracy, we have developed a component-wise reduced model, which was first pioneered by Professor Patera's group at MIT, and we have extended it to lattice structure design process. Let me explain the process of the component-wise reduced models in the in the uh, in the the design optimization context. First of all, we have to identify the reference components. Here we have identified simple joint and struct components geometry, as you can see here, right? Then you introduce finite element discretization for each reference component. Then we build, 
then we build um, <clears throat> then we build uh, the reduced models for each component that is joint ROM and strut ROM. And within uh, the process of building component reduced models, we introduce very important concept called ports, which is an interface that talks to environment. It connects with other component ROM. It can be used to impose boundary conditions. And of course, you can add more components through an available port, right? And also it can be used to apply external force. You can even rotate the components and attach to the system and attach many more as you, as you wish to form in order to form your desirable system domain. Then in design optimizations, uh, we assign a density variable uh, to each component, which varies from zero to one. Usually we avoid zero to ensure the well-posedness of the problem. Uh, so we set our low bounds to be 0 0.01 uh, usually. And uh, the small, uh, the density variable implies putting no material there. And density of one uh, implies you put the material uh, there. We automatize uh, this procedure by solving design optimization problem and to find uh, an optimal lattice structure, for example, to minimize the compliance of the system or, uh, or minimizing the mass with uh, the stress constraints. All right, here is a numerical example for lattice structure design using component-wise reduced model. Here we minimize compliance, imposing a constraint of the mass being at most 40%. The downward pressure force is applied on the top middle and Dirichlet boundary condition are up imposed at the bottom corners. Uh, the full monolithic finite element solve involves 2.7 million degrees of freedom, while the seat of the ROM has only about you know, 4,000 degrees of freedom. We apply the optimization solver called the, uh, the method of moving asymptotes, so-called MMA, which is very popular in solving the density-based topology optimization problem. And this movie, hopefully it's, it's playing. Okay, it does work. Uh, this, this movie shows the optimization history from the beginning and to the, the final optimal uh, shape of the lattice structure. Initially, it started with a uniform density variables and evol it evolves into an optimal design where the blue components implies no material, right? And then uh, the red component, uh, you put the material. So it, it does give you the optimal shape of the lattice structure. All right, let's look at uh, the speed up and the accuracy of the component-wise reduced model. For this particular numerical examples, the CW-ROM, the component-wise reduced model, achieved a 660 times speed up with respect to the monolithic finite element solve. And for accuracy, uh, we easily achieved a relative error of less than 1%. But the nice thing about this component-wise reduced total model is that the accuracy can be tuned by adding more bases. So we observe that the exponential improvement of the accuracy as we increase the basis size. Pretty, pretty nice. And this component-wise reduced total model lattice structure design can be applied for stress constraint problem also, where the mass is minimized with the stress constraints. This is considered to be a harder problem than minimizing the compliance problem. Uh, here we introduced a four different components. Then we define a computational domain uh, whose shape is L bracket, uh, which is a typical stress constraint um, the benchmark problem. Then we assemble and fill the computational domain with the four uh, component ROMs, as you can see right here. And then uh, throughout the, uh, the optimization process, delete unnecessary components to find out the optimal L bracket lattice structure. Here, all the blue components are eliminated uh, throughout the optimization process. And then um, here is the zoomed in picture of the components in the optimal design with very detailed stress contour plots, which you cannot get uh, with other types of lattice structure design methods, such as homogenization or beam-based methods. Finally, uh, we can post-process the design to get rid of all the hanging nodes, hanging structure. Then we get this smooth and nice lattice, uh, lattice design for L bracket. Okay, uh, we have also solved uh, the stress constraint problem for 2D bridge uh, lattice structure design with component-wise reduced the models. A paper about stress constraint component wise reduced model is coming soon, so please, please stay tuned.
All right, let me conclude the talk with some summary. I hope I have introduced many interesting reduced order model techniques, uh, data driven and physics, con physics constraint approaches. Uh, the examples I have shown you include black box approach, deep fluid on 2D burgers equations, and the linear subspace reduced store models apply to various Lagrangian hydrodynamics, including seed of blast and Rayleigh Taylor instability, et cetera. However, the linear subspace reduced store model was not able to achieve a good accuracy for long time advection dominated simulations with small reduced uh, space dimensions without special treatments, such, such as the time enduring approach. Uh, therefore, uh, we introduced a nonlinear manifold reduced store model that finally achieves a speed up uh, with a great accuracy for advection dominated simulations with small latent space dimension. Then the space time reduced order model that achieves a, a 2700 uh, speed up with a relative error less than 1% for particle transport problem. And the component wise reduced to the model for lattice structure design that accurately accelerates the optimization process considerably. Finally, I have introduced the web page for the Libram where you will find many useful tools to build data driven physical simulation models. All right, if you uh, find uh, the things that I have presented today useful for your applications, please let me know and let uh, let our reduced total model team know so that we can help you out and develop awesome data driven physical simulations uh, techniques together. Uh, with that, let me conclude my talk and thank you for your attention and any questions are welcome. Uh, by the way, uh, there was ooh, do, 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 there was um, let me go back to the chat room and I answer the John Ragusa's uh, the questions. Xiao uh, asked that I think sometimes it is super expensive to generate a reduced total model for uh, the prediction of every grid point of the computational domain. However, if we focus on uh, some handful small size specific quantities of interest to order, small domain um, of computational domain, then the time spent on generating the training data for building ROM can be achievable, especially when it is not computationally tractable for generating even just uh, a few data points. I think it might be a good idea to relate the training to the goal we need to target and reduce, um, uh, reduce reduce the model complexity based on the high fidelity model and the goal in mind. Uh, so the offline time that I think will depend on the goal in the mind. Yes, for example, yeah, uh, so definitely a very valid and good point, Xiao. Um, and actually the component wise reduced model is kind of addressing that issue, right? We are kind of uh, doing the training on the, uh, the small component, uh, right? And then we assembled that reduced to model just like the, we assembled the finite elements. And in, instead of finite element, we we are uh, you know, attaching the component ROM together, right? So, so that's yes. I mean, the training cost can be very, um, very much uh, reduced in that way. And also, in terms of the goal, uh, there are of course the the goal oriented reduced to models um, available in literature. For example. Um, 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 Masa, Masa, uh, a friend of mine from, uh, from Canada, uh, the Toronto University of Toronto, he, he does a lot of works on goal oriented reduced models. Um, so, and not only Masa, um, um many other, uh, the researchers in reduced model community, they do uh, build a goal, goal oriented reduced models. Uh, so yes, it's definitely uh, a way to, to investigate. Okay, the next question is by Peter. And okay, scaling of speed up with problem size. Is this because the ROM doesn't grow as fast as the original problem or because the ROM implementation scales better computationally than the original simulation? Yes, exactly, right. Um, as we increase the problem size, uh, whether because of the, um, the, uh, the complicatedness or uh, because of the um, you know, based on the convergence study, you know, this is the, the required refinements, the resolutions you have to maintain. 
um, it's the, the, the speed up of the reduced model all, you know, boils down to um, how much it can compress the solution space uh, into the reduced, uh, reduced space. And the speed up, um, um, it's more speed up is going to be achieved uh, as, um, as you can uh, achieve more compressions in your reduced, reduced spaces. So, so it's not so much about the, uh, it's, it's not so much about the, uh, about the, uh, the size of the high fidelity models. Uh, it's about the, the compressibility uh, where the, uh, the speed up of the reduced model on, and also the accuracy of the reduced model uh, and depends on. So, so a lot of times, um, you know, the, the parabolic, um, or um, the equations has very small um, the intrinsic uh, the sp the spatial dimensions, uh, which can um, uh, represent the, the whole uh, the high fidelity solutions with a small small uh, small basis size. Uh, that's exactly why the reduced model uh, was able to uh, obtain a higher uh, the speed up as you increase the uh, increase the uh, the problem size. As long as that uh, the problem has, you know, the small, um, you know, the Kolmogorov width, right? I mean, the Kolmogorov width. If as long as the Kolmogorov width is uh, decaying fast, then uh, the reduced model can uh, obtain the higher accuracy and the high accuracy and with a higher um, with a speed up. Okay, next question is by Brenda. Do we use the nonlinearity of f to inform the dimensionality of <clears throat> hat w? Is there a systematic way to determine the dimensionality? <clears throat> okay, so um, the dimensionality of the hat W, which is the solution, uh, the generalized coordinates, uh, the size of the solution uh, space field, it's not depend. It's it is not um, uh, you know determined. It is not determined by where is Brenda's oh, Okay, it is not determined by uh, the the nonlinearity. Uh, of course, nonlinearity is going to affect the solution fields and solution dynamics, but mainly um, is it's the characteristic of the dynamic which is determining the um, determining the the basis size uh, of the reduced reduced models or the size of the hat W in in your questions according to your questions. So so um, and actually uh, when we determine the the dimensionality of the nonlinear terms, by the way. We do use the solution basis um, in the context of SNS um, SNS method, which I didn't go into details, but we can use the solution basis or the modified of version of the solution basis to um, infer uh, the, the the basis size for the nonlinear terms at the F. Um, it's 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 technically detailed. Uh, te te I have to go into the te technical details. Uh, so I, you know, let's let's meet Brenda and then uh, discuss further. All right, John, uh, your slide twenty two. Let me go to slide twenty two. Okay, slide twenty two. Here is twenty two. Okay, what difference do you make between POD and project uh, based ROM? Okay, the POD is a method of um, obtaining a reduced basis. The, the projection-based reduced model, uh, in, within the projection-based reduced model, you use that reduced basis and plug that into the, uh, the governing equations and then apply the Galakin projection or least square project, least square pattern of Galakin projections and any, any other uh, method of closing the, the, the over-determined system. That's what I mean by projection-based reduced model. So, so there is a distinction between those two. Uh, uh, yes, I mean yes. The the most the reduced basis can be uh, can be obtained from um, not only from the POD most, but also many other uh, ma many other uh, ways. Um, you know, you, you can get the the POD most. Uh, you know, balanced truncation method is one of them, and yeah. There are there are many other ways of you know obtaining the projection based uh, the the reduced basis in the projection based reduced model. The POD is not the only one, right? Okay, Carolina, <clears throat> are 
the connections are assumed to have the same material properties, stiffness as the struts, or are they different? So I, I think you are talking about <clears throat> the lattice structure, <clears throat> um, uh, the component-wise resistor models, right? Yes, I mean, the, the stiffness or Young's modulus or <clears throat> or the the Poisson's ratio, we have used the different uh, different types of. Uh, I mean, we have used the identical material properties for each component. However, <clears throat> those material properties can be parameterized, right? And we can train the resistor model, each component of resistor model, by varying the um, those material properties, stiffness, etc. Then each component ROM is going to be able to handle those variations of the material uh, properties uh, while uh, when you are using those component-wise reduce model in the context of design optimization. So it is it is very possible and it's it's actually straightforward to do so. Uh, so if you are interested in more about that, please let me know, Carolina. All right, uh, Jay up. <clears throat> Asked in CW ROM optimization example, how is the sensitivity information computed uh, by numerical finite uh, by numerical finite difference or analytical adjoint method? So, <clears throat> very good questions. The compliance, uh, the minimization problem, uh, it's it worked out mathematically really nicely. So we only need a four the sol uh, four the solutions, and using that right hand side uh, the external force and that. Um, coincidentally match uh, with the uh, adjoint method formulation. So we don't need to uh, the solve separate adjoint sol sol uh, the method uh, adjoint problem to compute the sensitivity. <clears throat> However, for the stress constraint problem, we do have to uh, go over the adjoint method because the, it has a different right hand size because the quantity of interest has been changed. Uh, so um, we do ha we did uh, the implemented the uh, the adjoint method for CW ROM and we did not use the finite difference uh, for uh, for the, the sensitivity computation. Okay, Peter uh, he asked, what can ROM tell us about the original physics? Can you point back to the in uh, important unimportant physics uh, dominating the solutions? Ignoring correction X in the original model will be faster without sacrificing significant accuracy. <clears throat> okay, so uh, so you want to go back to the slide where I talked about the, the uh, you know the advantage and disadvantage of using the physics um, the physics constraint or not. So. <clears throat> um, so, so important things about physics constraints uh, is that, as I uh, illustrated, uh, physics constraint data driven method, as I illustrated before, it is more robust in uh, in 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 um, extrapolations, <clears throat> right? Um, so, I have demonstrated that uh, in the um, with the with the CDO blast uh, the problem using the local reduced model we perturbed the, the parameter space so we were able to still get the pretty good uh, accuracy. However, if you, you are if you are not using the physics in your model, then uh, you don't get that uh, extrapolation uh, capability because uh, it only knows the data. Uh, it didn't incorporate the physics laws, and so when you extrapolate. Um, the data driven method has no idea where to go, but uh, the physics constraint, uh, the method, they know they are guided by the physics law. So, so in that sense, um, the, um, the physics constraint, uh, the data driven method is more beneficial. Um, and also, it, it tends to require less sampling data. Uh, than the data driven because it is not only relying on the data but also it relying on the physics physics governing equations. Uh, at, uh, on the other hand, the data purely data driven uh, methods uh, <clears throat> only relying on the data, so it tends to use the a lot more uh, a lot more uh, a lot more data than the physics constraint uh, methods. All right, so I, I think I hope I have answered your questions. All right, if not, please do not hesitate to contact uh, contact me. Okay, next question is by Emmanuel. 
very nice work. I could expect it to be difficult to reproduce a highly nonlinear system in a reduced uh, space. It seems you are able to reproduce the most important features of the flow. This is great. I wonder if you can make sense of what are the important components and why. For example, I would be interested to see the performance of your, your approach to fluids that have Lagrangian coherence structure. <clears throat> this could be an interact uh, way to detect uh, LCS. Great, yeah. Um, well, Emmanuel, do you wanna uh, do you wanna collaborate on this? Uh, we will be happy to do so. So, please um, uh, let's let's be on contact. Uh, let's 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 communicate on that. All right, Carolina. Thank you. Shalom. So far, okay. Uh, Jayhap. <clears throat> Thank you for your answer for the sensitivity analysis in CW realm. Following of your answer, I'm wondering if the edge joint sensitivity is performed in the level of reduced uh, reduced space as well, or full order space. Yeah, of course, in the reduced space, and not only the reduced space, but component reduced space. So we worked out the, the sensitivity <clears throat> within the. Um, oh well, yes. Uh, let me take back. Yes, the sensitivity edge joint method. Uh, has to be uh, on the assembled uh, the system, but those assembled system is consists of the reduced components, right? So the size of the edge joint uh, system, uh, the equations uh, is smaller, a lot smaller than the, uh, using the monolithic finite element method. So that's why uh, it is it is efficient, uh, a lot more efficient than using the monolith, monolith finite element method. All right, uh, so I, I, I do think that I have, um, I do think that I have answered all the questions from Q&A uh, from the chat room. Uh, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask, ask directly. Okay, Masa, uh, nice talk, a very broad range of methods and application. I enjoyed it very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, Masa, you, you just messaged me internally. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Masa. All right, um, uh, if there's no questions, uh, let me, let's end here. Uh, thank you so much for attending the DDPS seminar. It was, you know, without, without you guys' support, um, we, we cannot do this uh, alone. Uh, thank you so much, so please, Keep supporting us uh, by attending and, and and so on, and also please recommend any uh, you know speakers uh, you would like to hear the presentation of. Uh, then we can uh, do our best to invite uh, those speakers also. All right, um, thank you so much. Um, have, have a nice uh, rest of the day, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, bye bye everyone. Let me stop recording.